All right, I'm going to break down this Russell Westbrook trade to the Lakers. Uh, obviously, it's going to make the Staples Center rock. The Staples Center is going to rock, at least for that first month or two of the season. Uh, number two, the talent at the top of their roster is incredible. You're talking about three future Hall of Famers and uh, two all-time greats, at least, if not Anthony Davis, if he doesn't get himself into that conversation later in his career as well. Uh, and then I do like the fact that Russell Westbrook will take some of the physical toll off of LeBron and AD. They won't have to be have to carry as much of a physical burden as they did last year, and that should help. The Lakers should be better when LeBron's on the bench because Russell Westbrook can have that second unit to himself. Uh, and then LeBron's brilliance. As a player, obviously he's one of the smartest that's ever played the game as far as basketball IQ. So maybe he can figure this thing out. So with all that said, I give them a puncher's chance. A puncher's chance just for those reasons. But overall, I don't like the move. I don't think the pieces fit. All right. And basketball is largely about chemistry. It's not just about throwing together a bunch of talent. All right. Russell Westbrook likes to play fast. Even in the half court, he's hectic. LeBron likes to play slow and deliberate. All right. Uh, Russell Westbrook and LeBron are both ball dominant. Okay. So neither one is a catch and shoot guy. And that's the thing about this big three in LA now. None of them are great shooters. None. All right, uh, you got Anthony Davis is like a 30% career shooter from three, shot 26% last year. Russell Westbrook is a 30% career shooter from three, shot 31% last year. I think AD's 31% for his career. And LeBron, who's improved from three, is a 34% career shooter from three. So none of them are great three-point shooters. Those other two players in the starting lineup better be knocked down three-point shooters. That's for darn sure. All right? And if you look at LeBron's big threes over the course of his career in Miami, in Cleveland, the third guy has always had to step back and essentially be a glorified role player. All right? It was Chris Bosh in Miami. It was Kevin Love in Cleveland. Who's it going to be this time? Anthony Davis can't be him because the Lakers need him to return to an MVP type level for them to have a chance to win the championship. So it can't be him. You don't want it to be him. Russell Westbrook can't be him. Yeah, they all make sacrifices, but Russ can't be the one to completely step back because if he's not going to be able to be Russell Westbrook, then what's the point of having it? All right, you can't put Russ in a role asking to play differently and expect him to be a valuable piece to your team. He's got to be able to a large degree to be Russell Westbrook. The guy that's most built to do it is LeBron. Now, I'm not saying he's going to become this glorified role player. He's not. He'll still be your best or second best player on the team if AD emerges. But LeBron, and he's going to be the most important player because he's going to have to be the one that sets the table. And that's what I mean. What I mean by him stepping back is him viewing himself as the third scoring option. I think the way the Lakers need to play is LeBron needs to be the primary ball handler and decision maker when the three of them are on the floor. For the most part, occasionally, of course, it'll be Westbrook. When LeBron's on the bench, Westbrook can, you know, handle the rock. And like I said, take that second unit, take ownership of that. And then in transition, even when LeBron's on the floor, you can have Westbrook push it. But in the half court, LeBron needs to be that decision maker and really view himself and say, I'm going to be Magic Johnson this season. They won a championship with LeBron playing point two years ago. I get it. They didn't have the big a big three like this, but he still ran the point and it paid off in the title. So LeBron needs to run the point and say, I, my job is to feed A.D. and Westbrook. Make sure that those two eat. Now, you may be saying, well, how's Westbrook going to be off the ball? Uh, like I said, he'll have his time, his chances to handle the ball. But when he's off of it, I need Westbrook driving. LeBron can draw double teams. A.D. can draw double teams. When they kick it to Russ, don't settle for that three. 
Driving, at the very least, take that mid-range, maybe elbow jumper. You're good at that. But go to the hole and finish or kick it out for a three to someone else. That's what I need Russ to do. But I need LeBron to be like, I'm the tables there. I'm the third scoring option. Because here's the thing. LeBron is going to get his 20-plus points just by being out there. That's how good he is. All right, he's going to get 20-plus points, even without trying. So make sure AD eats, make sure Russ eats, and, of course, the other guys get to eat. All right, that's the way, I, that's the formula I think the Lakers need to use to win as big as they can this year with this group. That's how I think it needs to go. Obviously, they need to get shooters around these guys because some people are bringing up Miami. Oh, it's going to be fine because LeBron and D-Wade, it worked perfectly for those guys in Miami. Well, a few things. Number one, LeBron was in his athletic prime. Okay, LeBron was at the height of his powers in Miami. And LeBron and D-Wade wreaked havoc on opponents defensively. LeBron at this stage of his career and Russell Westbrook, who's never been like an awesome defender, they're not going to do that. All right. Secondly, the NBA was different back then. Even though they shot the three and it was important, it wasn't like today. All right. It, we hadn't seen a Golden State Warriors. We hadn't seen teams shooting the three as, as well and as much as they do today. All right. So it was a different type of league and style of play back then where shooting wasn't as important as it is today. And three, they surrounded D-Wade and LeBron with shooters. Ray Allen, Mike Miller, Mario Chalmers, Shane Battier. I mean, they had some sharp shooters around those guys. I, the Lakers aren't going to be able to put that caliber of shooting around their big three. They'll get some shooting, no doubt. But it won't be on that level. So this is a chemistry experiment that makes Brooklyn look like a match made in heaven. I mean, because those guys in Brooklyn could all great outside shooters. They don't have that with the Lakers in this big three. So um, like I said, puncher's chance because you never can totally write off LeBron. Uh, and the talent is great. And the West is open. There are no world beaters in the West. There are a lot of good, really good teams. The Clippers I would go with if Kawhi was healthy, um, but he's not. Phoenix, Denver, Utah, Dallas, I think will be much improved. Um, Portland, you know, none of them scare you. They're all good. And the Lakers are right there. Golden State, we'll see what they do as far as other moves. But they're going to be up there in that bunch too. Um, so puncher's chance for the Lakers. Don't love it. Um, big time chemistry experiment, but puncher's chance. For the best stories, easy to find scores and comprehensive team pages, plus access to every live Fox Sports game and exclusive bonus cameras, download the all new Fox Sports app now.